Uh, thanks for uh, you guys showing up. Uh, I mentioned Hacker Strip Tees on Twitter, and I get a good crowd. And it's like the next time I'm going to be offering cookies. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, I am. I do have to apologize. So uh, the good thing is I'm going to be disappointing a lot less people. Um, the, tr the program said there was a demo. It's like, uh, and unfortunately, as you can tell by the certifications, this is not a technical talk. So. Sorry about that. But I did see on, uh, I did listen to Security Justice Podcast, you know, good podcast, who actually mentioned you should be doing magic tricks for social engineering. So I need, uh, I need a volunteer, I need to help and stuff. You know, who's got a uh, challenge coin? Who here's got a challenge coin? Okay, I was trying to spot the Fed, thank you. Um, no, no, just, uh, uh, just any kind of coin will do. Just, uh, I need a quarter. It's like a gold piece. It's like someone help me out here. I mean, I'm already suffering enough here. Please, someone. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Great gentleman here. Everybody was digging for money. I, I should have said, like, yeah, oh, yeah, uh-huh. That'll happen. Uh, slot machine. Okay. Uh, but what I was going to say is uh, I, I'm going to do this trick. I need science. Let's just. I don't know this gentleman, okay? Wait for it. My four year old loves this. Come on. Sheesh. I'm working with what I got, and it's not much, okay? Help me out here. Sheesh, man. Yeah, you'll get that back now, right? You really want that one. So, um, so okay, what we're going to do is, uh, since obviously we're having a, a little problem here, um, I, I do know another trick. Um, does anybody know Penn Gillette? It's like uh, when I was doing research on the book and stuff, you know, I actually met him uh, doing the show at the Rio, and he does this thing called predictive analysis, where he actually gets a read on the crowd, and then he calls someone up, and he's actually able to tell them what they had for dinner last night. Like within 85, 90, because of the people, you know, geographically, you know, there's not many choices around here. Hacker conference is going to be easier because it's probably pizza. But uh, it's like uh, I'm going to try to do that show. And I'm going to try to see what I can do and see if I uh, see if I can make it work. So let's start with the general read of the audience. Okay, here, who here is married? Raise your hand. Okay, wow, that's good accessory for geeks. Yay. Okay, so who here has children? Raise your hand. Wow, and we're spreading. Awesome. Okay. Now, uh, another good question is, who here has bought a car off a car lot? Not off a of Craigslist, not off of eBay, not found in an alley. It's like, uh, okay, that's a little bit less. Okay, I'm trying to read everybody. Okay, who here has shopped at a grocery store, not Walmart, like an actual grocery store? Okay, wow. Walmart's not totally taking over. That's good. Okay, now also let's go to another one. Let's go and ask the one last one. It's like, who here has bought something off the internet? Raise your hand. Okay, dude, you're not even playing. Okay, come on. Because if you haven't bought something off the internet, you're not playing. Okay, it's like I want. Every, I need cooperation from everybody. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Okay, so now I need one volunteer uh, who, who doesn't mind being a victim, I mean a, a contestant uh, on this little competition um, So uh, for, for this little trick thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to ask you five questions. These questions deal with uh, dietary, social, psychological, um, geographical, and how old you are, your age. Okay, genealogical, I don't know that really well. I'm not that educated. So here we go. So I'm going to ask this, with these five questions, I'm going to ask you what you had for dinner. Now, if I can guess what you, have to, you had for dinner, guess what? I win. It's like, and you owe me a drink. No, not really. It's like, but if I lose and I can't tell what you had for dinner, I will give you a nice little hacker sticker set later uh, after the, uh, the talk because I forgot it because I was working on my slide still for some reason. Uh, and I blame uh, you know, several parties last night. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is like, I'll have those stickers for you if I lose. Okay? So let's go and uh, everybody raise your hand if you are a spouse. If you have a spouse, it's specific because of the, the sociological questions. Uh, if you have a spouse and you want to volunteer, raise your hand. Okay, you right there because you're cute. Yes, right there. Go come on up here. Not that you weren't cute too, sir. I'm just saying. It's like I want to. There we go. 
Yeah, you gotta come up here, come up here. What's your name? Marisha. Marisha, okay. Marisha, it's like, uh, is this your first DEF CON? Yeah. Obviously, because she volunteered, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so, so uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to do a uh, little thing. I'm, I'm gonna need you to look this way right here. Okay. Keep your eyes on me. Watch how I do it, okay? Well, actually, I need you to like, right, right about <laughs> there, right there. Okay. There's method to my madness. Yeah. Not usually, but yeah. This time we, we'll say there is. So I'm going to ask you these five questions. Keep your eyes on me, and I'm going to, by reading your body and your facial expressions, I'm going to be able to tell you, okay? Stickers. So, <laughs> yes. While I'm doing that, all I'm going to do is just entertain them. I'm going to put pictures of Lola cats up so it's like they'll, they'll be able to enjoy themselves as well. So, let's start with the uh, first one. Can we switch to the slide so they can see the Lola cats? Thank you. So, here you go. That's a cute picture. So, I'm going to ask you uh, one question first off. And this is going to be a sociological question, okay? So, where did you meet your spouse? Uh, dinner. Dinner at what? Dinner it was a restaurant? Yeah, a restaurant. A restaurant? You know the name of the restaurant? Yeah. What was the restaurant? <laughs> Someone's in trouble. <laughs> uh, swingers. Okay, very good. A cafe, not like a swingers. Oh. <laughs> Am I the judge? I don't think so. Okay. So uh, let's, let's go ask with the next question. Now this next question, oh here, I'll even let you look at one of the Lolo cats. See? Nice little cute little Lolo cats. Okay. So, so the, the next question is going to be, let's make it a psychological question because you, that looks pretty psycho. Um, if no matter what you eat, even if you're a vegetarian, it's like no matter what you eat, do you consider yourself an omnivore, herbivore, or carnivore? Like mostly, like no, 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 no. This is talking about to help get for the oh, dietary yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like, what do you consider yourself a carnivore? Yeah. Ooh, meat eater, be careful here, yeah, guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, okay, so you, you think you consider yourself a carnivore? Okay. So now let's ask the next question. Now this question is a geographical question, but we're going to try to use the logistical part of your brain. Okay. So in a number kind of way, how do you associate where you live? So what's your zip code? Yes. <laughs> Nine zero zero three six. Okay, that's good. It's like that shows the logical side of how you how you where you live. Okay. Let's go with the uh, the next question. Now this is more of a dietary question. It's like everybody loves the the internet cat. Um, you can look. It's like it's not bad. These pictures aren't really bad, so don't worry. Um, so um, on a dietary standpoint, uh, what do you uh, like to do if you were at home, yeah. not here? If you were at home, would you like to eat out? Eat in or have delivery? Uh, delivery. Delivery. Yeah. My kind of girl. I like that. <laughs> so it's like, so there we go. So that, that's your dietary question. Now, one more last question. And of course, I pick someone that's going to be very difficult and stuff, you know. It's like, because, uh, you know, I know this is a really great question. Uh, but on a geographical, so I can tell what your generation and stuff is, it's like, what's your birthday? The year or the day? Just give me the whole birthday. It would be great. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> March 2nd, 1982. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, that is social engineering. Thank you very much. It's like uh, she was a great sport. Uh, unfortunately, I've got some good news and bad news. The, uh, the good news is uh, you get a sticker set because I was lying about telling you what you had for dinner. It's like uh, that was uh, not true. But bad news is that was a social engineering uh, demo right there on how easy it is to be able to do it. I started off. You can get back down. So, yeah, like, she wants to get down now. So, I'm, I'm going to get kicked by a husband later. Uh, not the first time. Um, so, uh, so this is what we're going to talk about. It's like that was so easy with social engineering. I started by lowering your expectations. Came out a little harried. It's like it was a little dejected. It was like, you know, this is how, how is this going to work? Did a really lame magic trick. Yes, I realized that was lame. Uh, one more slide. I forgot to show you what, what this is all about because the fact, what did these questions have in common? They call Sarah Palin her email address. Those three main red questions were the password reset questions for Sarah Palin's email. That's social engineering. That's how you get those kind of uh, the data. You give them to think about one thing. So busy thinking about, oh, he's never going to guess what I had for dinner. It's like he's not going to get, I'm going to get a sticker. I'm going to show him wrong. It's like you get them engaged. You get them thinking that they're doing one thing when they're actually providing information for another. So that was our demo, and, and thank goodness the demo gods were, were nice and it didn't fail too much. 
So let's get right back onto uh, what else is going on. This is me. It's like yes. It's like it, uh, trust me. I'm going to be talking about both my jobs. It's like I've never. No one I know actually has ever seen me in that suit except for on Halloween during my day job. But uh, let me talk about that more. Um, I've got two jobs. I got a night job and a day job. The day job is I'm the uh, AVP of Information Security for National Financial Institution, where I monitor firewalls, IDS logs, and stuff, you know, and handle the day to day stuff. But my night job is I'm the CIO, Strategy One Solutions, where I go and break things. I've written a book, uh, Dissecting the Hag. Yes, it's shameless plug. And um, also um, uh, do some talks around the world and do uh, different kinds of uh, hacking and social engineering engagements as well. So, that's me, and that's enough about me. You can Google the rest. And then let's talk about, I would like to start off with a quote. There's your, uh, I am a CISSP, so there's your Sun Tzu quote as required. So, because uh, this is an InfoSec talk. And uh, that's enough of the Sun Tzu. Let's go with another one. I want to let people understand when we're talking about being critical, not being critical, but let you understand, I'm not a subject, a subject matter, matter expert on this subject of social engineering. Okay, there are a lot of people out here that know it a lot better than me. I do a lot of different research. It's like when I'm researching my books. And also it's like I just like doing this stuff. So I'm a geek who likes to talk. And I talk, you know, a lot. Just there's plenty of witnesses to that here. So, uh, so that's what this talk is going to be. Uh, so I want to use the Theodore Roosevelt quote. But here's the main Theodore Roosevelt quote, Roosevelt quote that I like to use. And that is to educate a man in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to society. And we're not talking like gang style. We're talking about like this talk hopefully will not just show you how I'm breaking things and getting into stuff, but hopefully how we can start uh, finding solutions to the human element, which is the main problem with our uh, uh, society and stuff, you know, in our industry when it comes to uh, social engineering and information security. Wow, crap. That was just the intro. Okay. But so far, so good. We're doing good. Hold on. Trust me, I needed that. Um, so now we're going to talk about the history of the 36 stratagems. We're going to talk about the history of social engineering. We're going to talk about how social engineering actually differs between cultures. And we're going to discuss the OSI model and go through the stratagems. So uh, my, one of my things I like to say is that if you want to learn how to cook, you go to France. If you want to learn how to paint, you go to Italy. If you want to learn how to conduct military strategy, you go to China. It's like one of the things I've admired about them is that they've got military strategy laid down. They know exactly how they do it. And I've heard people and stuff, you know, one of the strategies out there is like if you have to resort to physical violence, you've already lost the fight. It's more about the mind. It's more about the development of uh, your weaponry and also your treaties and, uh, and then the positioning of your people, which also involves social engineering. So that, that's the reason why I uh, like the 36 stratagems. It's like um, the reason why the... Um, a little bit more about the 36 stratagems is the fact that there are um, 36 different uh, strategies that are written out, given a story to each one to help better explain it. It's like two or 3,000 years old. Uh, now, another thing, let's talk about the history of social engineering. I mean, Kevin's good, but actually social engineering did, you know, occur before him or Frank ever got onto the scene. And uh, one of the um, first noted um, victims of social engineering. The victim of social engineering was Amenhotep III. He was socially engineered by the priest of the Amun, uh, the Amun priest of the, the royal city at that time period, where they were actually, in theory, just controlling his whole dynasty. So much so that upon his death, his son had to move the royal court to Thebes, and that's when the, the royal city became to Thebes, to get away from the influence of the Amun priest. And then he proceeded to wipe out the immune priest, but that came later. But that exactly, so sometimes there are bad consequences, you know, to social engineering. But uh, that was one of the first victims of social engineering. One of the most well-known social engineering attacks that have ever occurred in history is never credited with a social engineering attack. And that's the Trojan horse. We all know about the Trojan horse, about how it's, you know, it's the, the program and how you're able to do it in computer terms. But do you realize the very first Trojan horse was carried, uh, the social engineer carried it out? His name was Sinon. He actually disfigured himself, physically, you know, cut himself up, made himself look, you know, like near death. I mean, that's called method acting, which I'm not going to go that, you know, hard into. But it's like he actually left himself for dead on the beach as the Greek ships left. 
And this guy was actually able to convince the people of Troy for one, don't kill me. It's like two, oh yeah, the Greeks, I don't like them anymore. We, we have falling out, you know, they chopped me up. Hey, they left a horse, do you wanna bring it inside? Okay, that was pretty cool social engineering attack. We talk about the horse, but we don't talk about the person who carried it out. And that was a social engineer of massive proportions. So, mad props to him. Um, another thing is the bards um, uh, of old Middle Ages. They were social engineers because they weren't just trying to entertain, but they were actually in the employ of feudal lords who would then get that, gather that information. Because who actually went to the end to listen to the bards? the stable hands, the, the, the maids, it's like the guards coming back from the castle wanting to impress the local musical traveler, telling, giving them good intel. And then they would go back and report it. So social engineering has been a lot, uh, around a lot longer than an Amiga. So that, actually I don't even think Amiga's around anymore, but, but you, you understand what I'm saying. It's like uh, social engineering is here to stay. So also another thing is people don't cover very much is social, who's freaking attacking me while I'm on a freaking presentation for gosh sakes. That's not nice. Sorry, didn't end. okay. <laughs> that was rude. Okay, so uh, how does social engineering actually differ between the cultures? Okay, well quite simply it, there is. In Asia, um, you talk about conformity persuasion. Meaning people don't want to stand out too much. You don't want to like uh, create any disturbance and you can use that during your, your um, your uh, social engineering engagement. One of the trust models used uh, very well is in Japan where you got a trust model which is I trust you until you give me a reason not to trust you. Social engineering terms we call that jackpot. <laughs> it's like yes, you should trust me until you can't trust me anymore. Um, in Europe, it's authority based persuasion. In other words, like in the Russian trust model, you're untrusted until you're trusted. Well that might be a, different, a bigger problem, correct? Not really. I'm walking up to the place. It's like, I'm here for the surprise inspection of the uh, server farm. Uh, I need to be let in. Sir, you're not on the list. What part of surprise did you not understand? Obviously, you're not in control of the situation if you're not even understanding that I'm supposed to be here today. So why did they let you on this shift? Let me in the server room, and if you're lucky, I won't put you on the report. And that's how you do conformity. Uh, that's how you do authority base. And, and then don't worry. I always put them on the report. I was just lying. I, I will put them on there. Um, so... And, and that's how you do when you're dealing with like European, it's like when you're dealing with authority-based persuasion. And North America, it's need-based persuasion, which is really cool because you got to be polite. I was actually asked to do this um, uh, demonstration, social engineering demonstration in a uh, secured location. Uh, I can't tell even what city it was in. It wasn't like a main one, it was just, uh, but it dealt with uh, financial stuff. And instead of going you know, through the, the, the bulletproof glass and the man trap and the armed guard and the metal detector and the x-ray, I just hang out by the employee entrance and waited for my target, which was a guy being followed by a girl. And so I go in and insert myself in between the guy, he opens up the door and I hold the door open for her. I am a gentleman after all. And then I followed in right behind her. It's like, those are the kinds of things that we, we do a lot in, in North America. It's like, you won't, you'll question people, but what happens when I roll up in a wheelchair with four boxes on my lap and ask you to let me in? Are you going to be that a-hole that's not going to let me in the door? <laughs> no. Should you be? Yes. You should. But we want to be polite more than we want to be secure. And that's one of the biggest problems that we manipulate here in North America. In South America, it's like reciprocation based uh, 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 conformity. What I do with that uh, persuasion, what I do with that is I go like, hey, you know what? I'll put you on the report, show exactly how well you did. You help me out here. You make my report look good. I'll make, I'll make sure you look good. And it's like, and I don't lie e there either. It's like I, I do put them on the report, okay, when they let me into the server room because they want to look like they're doing a good job. So I do appreciate that. Now, why are we having to do these things? Why are we talking about social engineering so much lately? It's like, well, quite frankly, it's because of the fact that there's a new OSI model in town, okay? This whole seven layer thing is gone. It's like one through six is busted. I mean, okay, yes, I will admit we still have SQL Slammer going out on the internet for some strange freaking reason, okay? But, uh, but it's, it's slowly dying out. 
people are understanding that firewalls might be a good thing to block, you know, 1433. But also, uh, layer seven, it's like uh, we can still attack layer seven, thank you Adobe uh, and Microsoft. It's like we can still attack layer seven pretty good, but now we're getting heuristic uh, intrusion prevention systems on the desktop, we're getting uh, uh, more secured code, uh, we're getting more patches coming out, you know, every day. So that's sort of not dying away by any means, but it's slowing down. So where do we have to go? We have to go to layer eight, the human layer, the physical layer. The reason why uh, this person, this gentleman here is on here, he's the poster boy for layer eight security. Because this gentleman and stuff, you know, actually was in Tampa, Florida in March, spent 18 hours in an office building, 18 hours in an office building with no one questioning him, khakis and a dress socks, brought dinner. Okay, I would love to tell you his name. He's never been caught. But he did steal off a lot of laptops, cell phones. Uh, he actually stole a suit. So the next time you see him, he'll probably be wearing a suit when he's robbing your building. So uh, at least he's upgrading wardrobe. So that is the reason why we have to deal with layer eight. Now this is a perfect example, thanks to Jay Cran on Twitter who actually gave me this. This is the perfect example of why we need layer eight uh, security and how effective it can be. Right here, these three right here, is him attempting uh, to do a network-based penetration attack. Red is denied, gray is uh, either attained, uh, not attained or, or not tried, and green is success. So network-based attack right here. Deny, 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 deny. Okay, you're not getting in that way. It's like a utter fail, so you, know, you don't go home dejected though. What do you do? You come over here to the physical location of the headquarters. Let's try Wi-Fi, not, not happening. Oh, how about walking through the front door behind somebody? That seemed to work. Let's find an empty uh, conference room. Bingo. Let's get our laptop onto the network. There we go. And let's just jump right over here to where we've got domain admin credentials. For some reason, I think they stopped. It's like I don't think these weren't not attainable. I just like, I think the, the, the company just, okay, you win. Back off. So that's how that goes. That's why this is so uh, needed and, and it's usually so successful. I have not always been 100% successful in a network based uh, penetration test. I have been 100% successful in every social engineering engagement I've ever been on. And like I said, I'm not that talented. So it's like, it's just, that's the way it rolls. So it's like, and hopefully I'm not going to get, now I'm here, it's like I might get caught next time. But so far, as of this time, I've been 100% successful. So let's start with one of the stratagems. Stratagem three is killing with a uh, borrowed knife. In other words, you want to turn an employee's assets against them so it's not really you the one attacking, you let those people be the attacker. And some of the great tools for this is of course the Googles because you know everybody wants to be a trillionaire. And, uh, but also you have uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, well, do we still use MySpace, anybody? Okay, just wondering, that's just professional curiosity. But there's also, uh, there's these tools out there. Those, uh, those are what you're going to use to do your data mining, to actually try to circumvent those. I'm going to be on Facebook all over the place, my profile. Not me personally, but Kathy. Hi. I'm Kathy. I like long walks on the beach. Watched all the Buffy seasons. They were awesome. Uh, it's like I've seen Serenity. It's like uh, I don't like the notebook or uh, vampires that glitter. So it's like, uh, but we also happen to be in the same company fan page. And I just friended you because, you know, we're in the same, uh, we work at the same company in different cities and stuff, you know, but you're, you're real great to help me out and be friends. And, and yes, I'll help you with your farm and, you know, I'll kill who you need in Mafia Wars. And it's like, it'll be all great for about two weeks. And then I'm going to need help. My executive, who's, who I'm the assistant to, has lost his passwords and stuff. You know, he needs me to reset them, but I can't get a hold of the, the, the network guy. Can you help circumvent all that process and get me in trouble? I'm going to get fired for this. I mean, seriously, I need your help. It's like, can you hook me up and just reset the password for, for that account and, and just save the day for me? Be my hero? You will. I'll give you an extra cow in Farmville. Thanks. There you go. And that's how you use the employee. But how else do you do it? How else do you do social engineering besides directly manipulating people? Well, it's also good for doing intel. There's a lot of good choices. Thanks to uh, a couple other people, it's like I'm not going to drop docs on Adam Savage like I planned uh, because I can stalk you. It's a much better website for that now. It's like, um, but also we also have Evil, which actually shows the Facebook phone numbers, people that post their actual phone numbers on Facebook. 
all st- uh, one-stop shopping for phone numbers there. Please rob me an oldie but a goodie. It's like, uh, and th- this I can stalk you. Actually, when you take an iPhone picture and it still has geodata in it, they're nice enough to tell you exactly where you're located and then put it on the internet for everybody to see. That's where the whole stalking thing comes in. And then uh, my favorite is just the old Twitter search, headed to. Because I started out this uh, talk when I was thinking about doing this and showing the, the danger of Twitters, I decided to go bad. I want to do the most evilest thing that I could think of by using Twitter. What could I do that could be so evil on Twitter? It's like, what could I do? What kind of damage could I do? If I had resources and I had the time and, and the meanness and, you know, and just, I'm not really a mean guy, but it's like if, I, if I was thinking that way, what could I do? Well, I could search my locations. You know, the Twitter uh, app on the Blackberry is so nice to tell you exactly where you're geographically at at the moment. And so I started searching for my loc. And I found this guy. It's like teaching healthcare provider CPR at WAH. The only thing that made this guy different than anybody else was I was wondering what WAH was. It's like, what's WAH? Well, it turns out it's Washington Adventist Hospital, which is right down the street from Walter Reed Hospital. Any feds that know where this is going, I'm a very good guy. This is all hypothetical and I'm not trying to do anything bad. So please, you know, you've got other things on me in your files that you don't need to add this to it. Um, so what I decided to do was like, hmm, let me find more about this LinkedIn guy. Now he's got my attention. Now I'm interested. So where do I go? Oh, hi, Steve. Everybody say hello to Steve. It's like uh, he's, on, he's on LinkedIn. He's a volunteer EMT. It's like he's a volunteer fire and rescue association. What I liked about here is that he's a consultant at Northrop Grumman Mission Systems. You know, that's telling me he's like possibly top secret clearance. It's like he used to use databases and stuff, you know, 20 year database design and development. If I'm going to do something bad, especially in the Washington, D.C. area, it's like I'm not going in as the kebab salesman. I'm not going in as a street vendor selling hot dogs and water. I'm going in as a first responder. Why? Because people aren't going to be the douchebag that stops the fireman to get into the fire for proper credentials. People aren't going to stop the police officer trying to respond to an event, especially a major event, that might involve important people that happen to live in the area, especially around Walter Reed Hospital, especially if they're an EMT there to, to help out and assist. That could lead pretty bad. But you'd have to find this guy. I can't track him down everywhere he's at instead of you know, and hope that he's at the same spot as soon as I get there, right? So I'd have to know where he lives. Where would he live? Oh, he lives right here. Thanks, Steve, again. I feel sort of bad, you know, for Steve because I'm dropping docs on him and stuff like this, but it's like he dropped them to the world. I'm just showing it to you guys. So I'm actually showing it to less people than he did. (laughs) So, So I don't feel too bad about it. Now I know where he lives. So now when he's dead and I got his identity and stuff, you know, and certain events can uh, occur and stuff, you know, that I can make occur, I might be able to have access to Walter Reed Hospital, which is a very bad thing, which is a very evil thing, which I would never do in real life, ever. Okay. I had to put a disclaimer in there. Just because I'm paranoid. So I love LinkedIn. Let's not just pick on the little people. Okay. LinkedIn is the Facebook for corporations. I mean, seriously. And they're also a great gold mine. Look right here. We've got uh, Scott, um, not the, the popular profiles. I don't care who's popular or not. I mean, I never did in high school because I wasn't. But, uh, but let's look at these people. We don't care about the marketing and recruiting and placement. Why would they be popular? Because you want to get a job. I'm looking down here. Who got promoted? Who are new hires? Oh, this person three months ago. They might have a personal assistant that I'm now their personal assistant. We just started up three uh, months ago. We're working on ramping up our new uh, uh, data center, and we're going to need uh, I need you to reset the passwords because they got out of sync because of the RSA token. Can you just reset all the passwords? I'd greatly appreciate it. It's like uh, also another good thing is I'm from I'm I, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma. If this was University of Texas, it's like uh, and was the highest pop percentage. That's where I had to come from as well. Um, bases in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So if I'm attacking Oklahoma, I'm from the Tulsa office. From the Tulsa office, I'm atta- if I'm attacking Tulsa, I'm coming from the Oklahoma City office. A lot of, I actually finished a uh, recent social engineering engagement, was able to forge an email, put it on an iPad, and get access to a server room from two different searches on Twitter and LinkedIn. 
I was able to forge an email good enough to put on and get me into a server room just from the information that I gathered off of this. And I didn't attack the low-level guy. I was attacking someone higher up. It's like the executives are like that. You get uh, CIOs, CEOs. They're susceptible to this kind of attack. And you have to be careful what you publish on LinkedIn and Twitter. So I'm not just picking on the – see, I, I'm not going to the guy that's just trying to hit on, like, the users. Everyone wants to say the users are stupid, humans are stupid. No, people are just not educated. That's the issue. Just like this uneducated network administrator who put his diagram on ratemynetworkdiagram.com. <laughs> he actually put, when he submitted it, IP address and other miscellaneous information has been removed. My supervisors would uh, feel quite unhappy with me if I uh, posted the full version. Even though I did post a full version of SDS network uh, diagram for the Encore Building Synergy Business Park with also the devices that I'm actually using. Yeah, they're not going to get mad about that being shown at DEF CON, I'm sure. Um, now, now this, this next slide, I am totally not BSing you on this one because I honestly did not believe it myself. Is an, I had to Google the company because I did not believe this was real. I pinged the IP address to see it. I did DNS stuff, you know, uh, IP lookup on it. This is the actual external IP address of the companies and there's their internal IP addresses and there's some of the different firewalls that they're using, the names of the, the version of the firewall and their website server and they're telling us all the internal and external IP addresses. Ouch. That's also what we call jackpot. <laughs> okay? That wasn't a user. That was an IT uh, network guy. Soon to be an unemployed network IT guy. Uh, it's, hey, it's freely accessible on ratemynetworkdiagram.com, which has got to be one of the best social engineering network uh, resources that I've ever had. Okay? Yes, yeah, that was the same place. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just goes. And, and please, guys. I don't want y'all to be malicious. Please rate their diagram. I mean, be fair. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, 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 so make sure you do that. Now let's go to one of the other stratagems. This is the uh, stratagem is to scheme with beauties. And basically it's going to be talking about how we're dealing with online versus in real life social engineering engagements and the problems people with a voice like mine have. Yes, not just visual, but audio. So as we talked in uh, previous stratagems, being able to fool someone online is pretty easy. Um, when you get to the point where you're dealing with um, calling a person in real life, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, because it's one thing to be able to say, hi, I'm Kathy on Facebook, and be able to exchange emails. It's another thing when you need to talk to the person in real life and tell them that you're Kathy. It's like, so how are you going to do that? It's very simple. You need to be able to change your voice in a way that will make the person make it sound more believable. And it helps if you have background noise, unlike where I'm trying to do it in a very quiet situation. Uh, but you want to be able to make it where it's convincing, where it sounds like, oh, I am Kathy. It's like I do need help with that password. Uh, could you help me out, please? Uh, so that's one of the main things. When you're dealing with um, doing social engineering. In real life, you're going to want to have the ability to be able to change your voice or have someone, an employee, that, you, that can impersonate a female or be a female uh, or an older person or the, the target that you're trying to choose. Uh, it's like if you want to go after someone that's an executive, uh, the World of Warcraft headset's really good with uh, being an old person, uh, maybe a little bit too convincing because I don't know if you're going to be, if you're going to be this old to sound like this, that's how I'm supposed to be working. Uh, you could maybe pull off as the owner of the company or uh, the CEO or, or something like that. Maybe a little but, too old. Uh, that's about the closest thing you're going to get to an old person. So with the, uh, the wild headset, I usually just stick with the, uh, with the female. Because that sounds like the most convincing uh, without hardly any tweaking at all on the, uh, on the settings. So... Hopefully you, uh, you like that. It's like, uh, hopefully this helps uh, show you some of the, the uh, things. And this is just one headset with preset 
of uh, voices. Uh, I mean, and trust me, all the other sets, uh, all the other uh, voices aren't as um, convincing as this one. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to take me seriously if I try to ask for a password reset like this. And I don't think you're going to be able to get anything from someone if you tell them uh, straight up, you know. Just give me your password now. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. So um, you, you want to be creative. It's like uh, there's other voice changers out there. Uh, this is just one, and it's just happened. To, it was just a find, and that's one of the things I liked about it. Um, it was just uh, by accident that says, oh, this could be used for social engineering. It's like uh, there's other devices that I'm sure are much more sophisticated that do the same thing. So please remember, it's like if it's on uh, line and stuff, you know, you, you, you can't trust uh, who you're talking to online. Um, one of the things I said in my book, you know, it's like uh, guys are guys, girls are guys, and 14 year olds are FBI agents. That's the internet. Um, but also now, and more and more, you'll see in real life, you can't trust the other person on the other end of the phone line uh, for the same reason. And there we go. Let's go on this. Thank you. Let's go to our next stratagem. I'm, I'm like so over time right now, they're going to be dragging me off in about 10 minutes. Um, our next stratagem is luring a tiger from its lair in the mountain. You wait for the worker to take his network to you. Uh, I don't know about it. anybody else who likes to go to jail and explain to Bubba and stuff, you know, just murder his family that you're in there because of a computer crime. Yeah, that's not going to end well for you at all, ever, okay? So you want to make sure that you can limit your risk, and one of the best ways to do that is not get caught and not be getting caught in the main headquarters. So where do you go? You go within a two-mile radius of the major Starbucks, Panera Bread, you know, place, where you can actually do, um, still access their network. And how do you do that? Through their laptop. It's like being able to use and mimic an, an access point. Thank you, Microsoft, for making sure that everybody begins out, hey, are you there, are you there, are you there, are you there? And I'm always going, yes, I am, yes, I am, yes, I am. Please join me. I'm there for you. It's like uh, we're not going to cuddle, but it's like uh, it'll be beneficial for at least one of us. Uh, so, so, so that's one of the kinds of attacks that you can do. Uh, this is another way to do it. Uh, uh, my uh, friend of mine and, and co-author of the book, uh, Kent Neighbors, actually took this picture at a Panera Bread outside of where he was, uh, uh, was uh, staying, right outside of the main co uh, company headquarters area. This lady left her laptop, her purse, and her latte. It's like for over 15 minutes, unattended. I'm not going to try to install malware. I'm not going to try to hijack her session. I'm not going to try to do some kind of cool, leap middle in the man, man in the middle attack. I'm taking her laptop, I'm putting it into her purse, and I'm malicious. I'll take her, her coffee too. It's like, a, and then I'm walking away and gathering the data. Yeah, they're going to come after me. Um, so that's one of the problems with, when we're talking about wireless security. It's just physical and, and also uh, from the network base. Now let's go and talk with tossing out a brick to get a jade. It's like, uh, which one is the scariest picture in there? Out of all those pictures, which is the scariest? It's the middle one, because that's the one you're going to put in your computer. And I like USB drives, and I like personal devices. This is a picture of me right there, again, and trust me, it's not that I like that picture, uh, believe me. But guess what I'm wearing under that nice suit? That's my best of doom. I call it the Vest of Doom because I think it sounds cool and I'm reliving my childhood. But it's like that's the name and I'm keeping it, okay? Uh, what can I do in the be uh, Vest of Doom? Well, here's the part where we come to the hacker striptease. Here's where you throw money. Oh, okay. So you throw money or days. It's all good. So here's the best of doom. Let's go and see what we've got in here. We got a couple of uh, drives here that are really nice. They've got uh, their Sand Cruiser. Thank you, Sand Cruiser, for giving us an environment to manipulate. So we can suck down the system hash and the, and the uh, password hashes of a system just by plugging it in for five seconds and then going off to the next machine. Those are really good. Very handy. Let's just empty pockets here. Oh, these are really nice. 
I drop these. I don't drop these in parking lots. People drop these in parking lots with malware on them. No, I put them in an envelope, address it to uh, someone in the company, and then put it on their desk when I'm in there. What are they going to do? They're going to plug it in and they're going to double click on that pay raise uh, for 2011. Right? Just to see, just to make sure they're supposed to be the one to get it and stuff, you know. They want to make sure they return it to the rightful owner, right? So let's see what else we got. Oh, these are really good because no one ever notices these when they're logging your keystrokes and stuff, you know, behind your computer. Those are really nice. Sometimes it's like you can't have time, you got some time, you got some time on your hands, it's like you're there at night and stuff. You don't want to uh, go and decrypt the passwords there. You don't want to try to be on the location. That's okay. I take the hard drive with me and I do that later. Sometimes I want the system to still be on but I still want to be able to attack it and stuff so nice little USB uh, wireless devices I can connect and bridge and then I'm just, you know, hacking from the convenience of my car, jamming out. It's got air conditioning. It's good. And let's see here. Um, also if I want to record a phone conversation, try to manipulate or actually just leave one at someone's desk while they're talking, try to get some incriminating evidence there. Um, if I want to do forensics on the machine, that always helps uh, to have something uh, available for that. Let's see, button, button, who's got the button? Here we go. Network uh, crossover cable, if, I, if you have USB rights and you think, oh, we're protected because we're, we're protecting USB rights, I'll, I'll just join the network directly to the other machine and then uh, download the files that way. And then here we've got um, some hard drives. I like this because this is the rainbow tables. So I can do some little password crafting right there. Uh, don't worry, I do have a permit. It's all good. Uh, here's just loaded with uh, malware. This is just uh, all different kinds because I might want to, you know, get a custom one out there on, on the network so I get to choose. Um, and I want to be able to compromise and take that data. So it's like I always carry at least, you know, one or two terabyte hard drives with me that are the same size because you want to be able to back up the data. What am I going to manipulate with that? How am I going to manipulate all that data? How am I going to crack? How am I going to do that? Wire? Well, I do it this way. This helps. 40 gig hard drive, 1 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, running Backtrack 4. Thank you, Teton, who helped me out with that. It's like, uh, just plug that in right here. Network jack. I'm good to go. I'm doing a wiretap on your network, backing it up to a 1 terabyte hard drive. I can get some password hashes off of that, I think. Especially if it's duct tape underneath a desk. <laughs> Here's another one because uh, this is one of my newer toys. It's like a... Uh, this is not mine, of course. Someone else uh, used this one to jailbreak. It's like the reason why I like this because Metasploit, thank you HD, who was able actually to, I was actually on an engagement breaking into a network gateway and from here. So everybody's walking past me and I'm just like, you know, trying to get into the, trying to guess the uh, password to an SSA channel and the manager actually comes up to me, so how are you liking your state? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. It's like, is that the new iPad? Said, yes. It's like, it does a lot of, a lot of cool things and closed out that, showed him the pictures, showed him the videos, didn't show him me breaking his network and uh, it was all nice and fun on that. So those are some of the things that you can get and those are some of the things that are available. It's like, it's just that easy to, to, to bring into it. I actually brought that into a secured location one time, which now I'm banned from, uh, because they don't like people carrying small little USB devices on their person. This is my favorite. 8 gigs right here. It's like uh, that goes through security uh, checkpoints everywhere in every country and it's got a nice, okay, don't hurt me. Okay, uh, I'm running long as I'm talking, can I talk any faster? I don't think so but I'm trying. So, uh, so there's a nice little 8 gig uh, USB drive for that. So let's talk about uh, the next one. Usually after I tell all the people of the things I can do, I want to get out of there. Um, so that's the uh, stratagem of escape. It's the best scheme. It's like you do that, how do you escape? Fake engagement letters. Those are my favorite. It's like I actually was uh, caught inside a dumpster in Houston. A lot of my stories end up with me in a dumpster. But, uh, but this one was I was stopped by uh, HPD and they were, wanted to question me at gunpoint about what I was doing there. I showed them the engagement letter, the, the one that I had, it was a legitimate one, and they looked at it and gave it back to me. They didn't call, they didn't verify anything. So now I carry two engagement letters. One's the real one and the one that's fake that actually tells them please assist them in any way, shape or can, uh, that you can and make sure you call his phone number and stuff, you know, and verify that he's supposed to be there. Which, you know, they've never called me. So it's like I've just been wasting those go plans. But, uh, but, but that's what you can do. That's how you do it. It's like, and I love it when they do help me. It's like, yeah, here's the engagement. Can you help me? Uh, I need to take that server out. 
It's like, a, this isn't the, you're supposed to help me. Like, you, don't worry, I'll put your name on the report. It's like, uh, you're doing a good job. I really appreciate it. And you did a great job catching me. And I don't, like I said, I try not to lie. I, I do put them on the report. And uh, so that is, uh, that's one of the best schemes. It's like using those uh, engagement letters. Now, what we're going to talk about is how we try to solve this in the next two minutes. <laughs> It's like uh, we try to do it by security awareness, but we're doing security awareness wrong in most companies. Look at this top security awareness poster from a company. So great, now you have insecure employees that have low self-esteem. <laughs> That's not the way to go, man. It's like that, and the last, the bottom three just show you don't even know what's going on because that whole mouse thing is just creepy. So we got to get better security awareness. Now, if, if security professionals made security awareness posters, we would try to get the point across, but people may not appreciate it as much. <laughs> now, the problem is we're also too technical. So sometimes we use terms and we try to put it in ways that we think are self-explanatory, but users may not know. You can't be so out there that they don't understand what exactly is going on. Some of them did. Others are going to be Googling later. That's awesome. Google Spanish Inquisition. All right. Now, so what you have to do is you have to get one targeted specifically to your company so your people understand it. Google headquarters has a good security awareness poster that's effective. Thank you, Ophelia. Sorry for all the Google guys in here. It's being funny. <laughs> Okay, so you got to strike an even tone. You got to be able to educate them and give them some information they, they can actually use. Something like just basically reporting uh, suspicious people. Okay, so, and like I said, I'm not trying to target anybody, you know, by uh, what they look like. I mean, because going to glamour shots is not a crime. It's just, uh, I'm just trying to inform people, you know, that certain, even if you are the number one hacker, it's like uh, you should be aware of them you know, in case they ever show up in your building. Yes, he threw a little gas light in. Um, so what else can we do? You're doing what you should be doing. One of the people, things that people don't understand is you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right now. You're at a security conference, you're at a hacking conference, and you're trying to learn, and hopefully you're sharing that information with others. That's one of the biggest things that we have in here. We're always about communicating and trying to break things. We need to start getting together as a community and start understanding and learning and teaching others. Every, everybody here should be learning and, and what they know the most about and developing a talk for it to give it later at another conference. It's like, I mean, that's what we should be doing. We should be learning and sharing that knowledge. We got to share it more. <laughs> you can't get me. You can't get me. I'm done. <laughs> oh, that's it, guys. Seriously, that's it. <laughs>